Okay, I've got the fuel pump in just like I said by putting the front uh, bolt through first, twisting it back the other way a little bit to get the back bolt started and draw it all in there. Pulled out the long bolt and then I glued in the short bolt to cover that hole, keep the oil out. Now I want to get this, uh, go ahead and get this harmonic balancer the rest of the way on there. I got about 110 pounds of air pressure. Just about 100 pounds of torque on that. Holding her in. Now get this water pump up in here. This, uh, I think I had this fuel line running to the inside, like so, if I'm not mistaken. Sit there and make sure about this. I think that's the way I had it set up. Yep. Looks like at some point I ran this fuel line underneath the uh, water pump and up, and I've got a bunch of tin foil and stuff that I used to insulate it from heat that I taped on behind there. It seems to have lasted, so I'll just leave it as is. Okay, some of these bolts, like the water pump bolts that I just put in here, I put uh, grease on them because they have a tendency to corrode from the water. So I wanted to uh, help out a little that way. Don't ask me why I'm using header bolts to hold this on. It just must have been what I had at the time, so I'll just keep using them. Alright, we'll just keep going here and get the rest of the stuff on, get the pulley on. It's running, but what an ordeal it's been. I put the camera away yesterday because I spent 12 hours trying to make it do this. Oh man, what an odyssey. 12 hours I spent yesterday when it came time to start this thing. No start. Had to get the distributor in just right. Not much room, it's got to be just the right tooth. Took a couple tries in the meantime. Murphy's Law came along, screwed up something else, and I ended up with a lot of troubleshooting, going back on the forums, going to you, pull it back, and then going to the parts store, 50 bucks later, was the pickup coil and the uh, control unit in the distributor. I essentially rebuilt the distributor yesterday, put it back in. Then I had no fuel in the carburetor. My van's parked on an incline up. And I guess all the fuel drained back in the tank. The pump wouldn't pick it up. Pulled the pump back out, tested it, put it back in. It was quite the odyssey. Now I'm getting some decent bolts. Uh, I need to put the grill back on. I'm assembling the last bit of the car here. These, uh, these bolts that held it on were rusted in and they've had it been around long enough so I have all these bolts here that a long time ago I had 100 pounds of bolts plated when I was, had a sp plating sponsor through my car club Street Magic about 25 years ago I took all my special bolts from cars I'd wrecked out had them all plated I've been using them all the rest of my life since then on hot rods now on my van I'm just gonna get uh, a selection of good zinc pulled Plated bolts to put back in there. Okay, I replaced both upper and lower radiator hose. 
uh, and a piece of fuel line after uh, 20 some years, a few years time. Now, I ran all this time, I ran this cheap Spectra hose covering on here, some dress up stuff, but uh, my old hose lasted some 20 long time, you know, 15, 20 years, whatever. Uh, this stuff makes your hose last longer. So I went ahead and slid it back over this universal piece. I've got a piece of flex hose here that I'm putting back on. I'm just going to go ahead and use this stuff. Okay, here we go. We've got her running. We've been we've got the cam broke in. Got the idle set down. Doing the final adjustments now. Nice up my timing. And we can see a huge piece right here. Coming out of there like crazy. So, the price I pay for taking the shortcut, I will have to deal with that. That's my mark, just above. Sitting about 18 by 20 degrees or so. There's above the scale there. The zero is down below that hole. So I'll be setting the rest of the timing by ear and by driving it. Okay, I'm on a new program here. Days have gone by. I didn't get the front of this to seal up and it turned into a nightmare. This is the worst I've ever had. So I advise take no shortcuts on the front of these motors. Uh, it can go bad like it did on me. So. I've got it back down again. This is the third time. And just a small leak out of here, out of one of these corners, can make a hell of a mess. Gets down, the fan goes down, gets everything underneath. Yeah, it's not good. So I clean it all up real nice, paying special attention to these gaskets that crumble up in the ends here, get used up. And I've gone inside with a light gone way back inside here, looked, pulled out the old chunk of cork and whatnot, and cleaned it off as best as I could. I'm going to get some, spray some sealer in there. So I've cleaned everything up real good, and I'm getting everything ready to go with the new setup, the two-piece timing cover. So I'll be putting this in like so. This is thicker, and it's nice and flat, and a plus I can get in here and put this thing in and uh, get in there and glue it in a little more, a little nicer and see what I'm doing. So, and of course I've taken these corners here and cut them, rounded them off with a file and smoothed them out there to make it a little easier for it to stick in there. I didn't want to do this, but uh, I figured this is the only way I was ever going to get this thing to seal. I took the old timing cover off. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be doing so good. So it's going to get retired. Okay, I've done a test fit here. I put this in dry with the rubber seal on it on the other side to see if I can get it to slide in all across the pan here and into the corners and those tabs to slide into the corners between the oil pan front corner here and the block. So I managed to get it in by carefully uh, prying it in. I take and use a Phillips, pry down gently like this to get the thing seated down, get it over the pins. I found I had to trim these tabs off a little bit more because they were I was fighting the edge of the oil pan. We don't want to be fighting that. We're trying to get this together with the seal in. So here comes the seal out of here. And it kind of slips right out of the gap right there. So both sides I had them slid right in there real nice so nothing gets gumbled up there. So I intend to put it back together that same way only with some sealer in there. And I hope that that will seal this thing up. And if it does, I'm going to recommend this two-piece unit. This is a summit unit. It won't break the bank. 
and if it uh, stops a leak or this leaks or this leak will kill you it'll cover the underside of your car if it leaks just a little tiny bit just the smallest leak okay I've got the plate up in here I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this right stuff right up here in this corner just to fill in this gap this is where the old oil uh, gasket would have been but I got it all slid in there I had to work at it and uh, I got both tabs in there real nice got the whole seal in held it down with a couple bolts a couple more bolts up here holding this whole plate on here I got copper coat I squirted in here and then I put this on the outside I hope this works like this I really want this to seal so I'm gonna let this set up overnight and then glue this on this is the other trouble spot some guys on the forums have been having sealing right across here because there's no bolts to hold the uh, timing cover down here in this area so we're gonna try to seal that real good tomorrow all right I've gone ahead and sprayed copper coat on the cover and then I've got the right stuff down here on this lower part which is been a problem I wanted something thicker down there and then I'm gonna oil the other side of the gasket here and then put it on okay we have installed the harmonic balancer and uh, for those of you who often wonder if you've got it on there good enough if you if you painted the balancer first you'll be able to look inside and see where the paint line ends and you know that you have it on all the way for those who get worried about lining up pulleys and things like that okay now we've gone ahead and pulled it on with our bolt I know they say not to do that but uh, it works okay with this one there have been some big blocks that I've built that uh, the interference fit was so tight on them things that uh, they're very difficult and I've actually had the machinist reduce that interference fit so that they would go on easier in the past so we have it all glued in there the uh, I noticed how the uh, right stuff bulged out when I torqued everything down I think it's sealed up good and we're gonna try it right now and see twice as hard as the first time <laughs> Flashlight work for me. You now it's kind of buried in uh, cedar from previous attempts. Yeah, I know everything else isn't hooked up on the engine, but it can run this way for a few minutes. It's looking like we have it this time. Well, so there you go. Are there any tips that are useful? That's good. Hit the like button. Or you can hit the subscribe button. It helps if you do. Okay. We're probably going to button it up this time now. Well, I went ahead and took my valve covers back off, and uh, I'm checking the rails for straightness. And, uh, for instance, we see right here, look for daylight underneath there, and I see that this whole area is high. We like to hammer these down with a ball peen, these holes, but this whole area, uh, they're just warped. So, and I've taken off this, these really trick Moroso gaskets, real thick and, and firm. I'm taking these back off. They're so stiff that... Uh, because of this they would leak a little in the lower corner in the rear and uh, so uh, this is going to go right onto my race car It'd be great with those cast aluminum covers and so I'm going to go with these double thick uh, ultra gaskets here Mr. Gasco ones they should embed in real good and, and I'm thinking we'll uh, seal this thing up after I straighten these rails out real good with a hammer and a punch make the whole thing level yeah. In the meantime, these gaskets here are going to go straight on here. These 
tricky looking aluminum valve covers here. Well, those things are short. My rocker arms are hitting them. So I'm going to put that thicker gasket underneath. Really hammering it down. Getting that thing straight. Oh yeah, that's what we want to see right there. Okay, I'm just going to throw these things on back on here dry. I'm just going to lay them on there and put the valve covers on. The bolts are a little bit of a problem getting the bolts through because they're shorter. So uh, it's been a little bit of a challenge to get the bolts started here with these thicker gaskets. I'm using uh, I'm using these extra washers on them here to help spread the pressure down on the pan rail. I got this really big one here that I'm using on the back one that was most prone to leaking. All right, I'm tightening down this uh, valve cover and these thick quart gaskets compress quite a ways, so it should be a good seal. I don't expect any more seepage out of these things now. I should mention what started this whole thing was uh, I decided to start using uh, synthetic oil in my engine. My engine was tight, it's old, but it didn't have any leaks. So I figured I'll give it a try. Well, pretty soon the valve covers start leaking. And then the tappets start clicking. Uh, I don't think they like that oil. And uh, then I had a cam go flat. So I learned my lesson. I didn't know about zinc additives. I do now. There's zinc additive in here now for sure. And uh, my other theory is when it comes to these old engines, these small blocks have been around 30, 40 years, uh, the 10 pieces, valve covers, timing covers, oil pan stuff, have been on and off numerous times. They get warped. The bolt holes get wowed out and, and pushed in and out, and pan rails and things. Uh, rails might get a little warped here and there, making sealing them up a little bit more difficult. So, this is something I think I may have learned. I wanted to share with you all. Let's take a look at the spark plug that came out of number four. Uh, there's not a lot of light, but we can see that it's oil fouled around the rim. And I can see by looking down inside, I can see the glistening down in there is essentially wet oil. So we know that number four has got a big problem. Okay, I guess we'll call this r and r the cylinder head in your old Chevy van. Continuation of my first video of changing the camshaft. Seems that I ran into additional problems. I could not seal the leak up front on the timing cover. Had it apart three times. It seemed as if it was actually blowing the oil out. And that's when I uh, determined I had blow-by in my engine and I realized that I had more problems than just the flat cam. So, I found number four when I did my compression test. 50 pounds in cylinder number four. So, from my determination, it's the cylinder head and there's a story behind that which I won't get into at the moment, but it means I gotta tear the top end down again, even further. I already covered all this in the camshaft section in my previous video, so I won't delve on all of that. 